auditorium at the moment, but we're hoping it's going to fill up as people um, get with the program <laughs> and um, have their lunch settle. Um, my name is Isla Haddo Flood. I'm from Wiki Africa. Uh, Wiki Africa is an organisation. It's a cross cross continental organisation that um, sorry that that supports Wikipedia by activating um, Wikipedians across. Africa and activating co um, co um, communities across Africa to to support Wikipedia. It also um, collaborates with um, partner organizations, heritage and GLAM organizations across Africa in order to make sure that their um, their memory and everything is, is um, put up to Wikipedia as well as donated. So we're hosting the um, the Activating Africa panel um, in collaboration with Yolanda Penza, who is sitting down here, and you will be speaking and seeing her later on. Um, <laughs> we have a host of um, different people. We're, we're doing running a bit of a show, a different show this time. I'm going to just set the tone of how, um, how things are and why it's necessary to, to activate Africa in this, in this way. Um, and then from then on, you're going to hear from people who are actually presently working and the projects that have been working in Africa. So you'll have a host of different things that are pre the present. And then we'll also hear from different people who have amazing visions of the future. So uh, we're hoping to all get it in before the, um, the goodbye session and the hello to Wikimania London session. So um, let's see if we can start. Okay. Sorry. Right, so activating Africa. If I can start, sorry. Okay. The continent of Africa, the place that um, many of us call home, but some, most of the people here um, hopefully have some inspiration from and some knowledge of. This is it from space, and this is it um, according to the Mercator projection, which is, has problem, which is how Africa is taught to people across the world, in that um, the north is, is projected as much physically larger than, um, than countries in the south. Um, but in reality, Africa is rather a large continent. Um, it has the whole of China, the whole of the United States, the whole of India, the whole of Europe, and Japan, and the United Kingdom, all within its shores. And there is a problem. We have, um, there's such a thing as inequalities of geography of knowledge. So that the um, two slides I've just shown you about the, how, um, the, how the maps are presented and how children are taught about, about their, their continent is also um, seems to somehow translate into how people, um, especially academics and people who are in the business of knowledge and knowledge production and knowledge dissemination also um, don't have the confidence to, or there are inhibitions and challenges for them to actually share their knowledge. So in this slide, you can see that um, the location of academic knowledge is all over. There's large chunks of knowledge coming from the United States, large chunks of knowledge coming from the United Kingdom, but this is the little bit that comes from, um, from Nigeria and South Africa. In fact, Switzerland publishes more academic papers than the whole of Africa put together. And this is true, that similarly, this kind of um, lack of contribution to, um, to, to the world's knowledge, um, for whatever reasons, is also played out in, within the online sphere. So in 2009, Google did, a, a, um, sorry, did a, an analysis of a whole load of different um, content, user-generated content on Google. And this is where Africa stood in relation to everybody else. 
So who is online? In South Africa, you'll hear more about this just now, but in Africa, um, in South Africa, 33% of adults over the age of 15 use the internet. In Kenya, 26%. In Ghana, 13%. In Botswana, 19%. Sorry. But in South Africa, that number has doubled um, over the last two years. So the, the, the amounts of people who are coming online are increasing exponentially. It's the world's second largest, as a continent, is the world's second largest um, market with 65% mobile penetration. Infamously, there are more mobile phones in Uganda than there are light bulbs, apparently. Um, and access to internet by mobile, 71% in, in South Africa, 50% across Africa. But where's this woman's heritage? How is she looking at, how is she viewing herself? Does she know about Wikipedia? We contacted, we, in a collaboration last year with Mixit, which is the largest um, mobile phone social network in Africa and a major contender to, um, to others like, um, sorry, like um, Facebook and Twitter, um, which this just shows you, it has nine million active users every single day. Um, we asked the Mixit subscribers um, what they knew about Wikipedia. And from their responses, we had quite a positive return that 70% had heard of Wikipedia, 28 had ac accesses, accesses it every single week during the week, 38% use at least once a month, but 36%, which is quite a lot, 40% don't care or can't really be bothered or don't know. But we were quite surprised that 57% knew that, of the people who obviously knew about it, knew that they could edit. And 21% had actually edited Wikipedia. And of the sample size, that's 2,000 people in, in, within Southern Africa, within South Africa. So where are they? Sorry, now back to you. Where are they? Because they're not represented on this map. This is a map of edits that were done in one, um, one day during May in 2011. Um, but as you can see, the red dots represent the people who are editing at that time. 84% of all geotagged articles come from Europe and North America. And the, as you can see from this, also from um, a study done by Mark Graham at the Oxford in Internet Institute, these are the people who are editing within Africa, from within the war, within the, um, the geographical sphere of Africa. Egypt's got quite a lot. There's a lot of nice representation from in North Africa. Southern Africa, South Africa is doing pretty well. The rest is pretty across the board, not very well represented. Um, but then it's above 25% um, average numbers of edits over three months. And of course, there are problems about about distribution of who is actually writing the articles that are being written. So geotagged articles, this is a representation again from the Oxford Internet Institute and Mark Graham and Heather Ford's work of, um, of the articles that are written from outside, about certain countries from outside of those countries. So you'll see 5% in the rest of Africa um, is written from local people, whereas in southern and no more northern, there's m more local contributions to the knowledge about those places. But the whole swathe of the majority of Africa doesn't have that. It's being written by other people externally from Af external to Africa. And indeed, there's more geotagged Wikipedia articles about Antarctica, 7,800 7, out of 1.5 million articles that relate to any one article in one country in Africa. So what happens when Africa doesn't contribute? Well, we miss, we miss the important voices from the continent. Subtle and important co um, cultural richness and differences are wiped out by global noise. Um, we reinforce ignorance about and stereotypes of Africa. To f we fail to give our cultures equal global weighting with European or 
American culture and we fail to be heard on our own terms by our own means. We continue to add to the systemic bias. If we don't contribute our own knowledge, who's going to? And if we cannot, be ra we cannot have rounded, relevant or informed global conversations about Africa either. Um, we run the risk of recording, of not recording our digits and indigenous knowledge and of losing those things as they are overtaken by other aspects of culture. And so the, the continued, there's a continued fractured idea of Africa that, that persists. This is Timbuktu. We all know that Timbuktu has had a fairly turbulent time over the last few, few years. But just an example of how, how dangerous this lack of contribution is or this lack of activation is, we, um, of the 500, I know that there are about 1,200 museums across Africa, but of the 525 that are officially on the AFRICOM list, only 26% have articles and 48 have no mention at all. Not, and that's on English Wikipedia. But if you look on the similar mark, it's also English Wikipedia, so the Italian Wikipedia will have a lot more representation. But of the 320 museums in Italy, 55% have articles and many, many more mentions. So almost all of them are mentioned in one way or another. So why is it important that we activate Africa on Wikipedia? Well, it forces m more than a single story. So it, the single story of Africa, of poverty and um, poverty and famine and constant handouts, it's not, not all true. And so we want the multiple layers of, and the multiple stories that exist about Africa to be represented. It shakes up outdated and flagrantly wrong information it empowers people to take charge of their own heritage. It emboldens, emboldens culture to state their values and worth on their own terms. It ensures that people have access to alternative ideas and it fosters cultural understanding and empathy. So how do we get these guys who are running along the side of the road in, in Mozambique? How do we make them press edit? How do we turn them into Wikipedians? Why does the Wikipedia need Africa? The next tech-savvy and accessible generation will find no relevance in Africa, in, in Wikipedia, if it continues. They won't find themselves represented, and so they'll find, won't find another platform, they'll find another platform to represent themselves and to be represented. And their, their culture, their heritage, their contemporary passions. And how can we ignore a, an audience of, one and, of half a billion people who are coming up in the world? By activating Africa, the, Wikipedia, the Wikimedia Foundation and the Wikipedia community can truly imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. And that's... That. Thank you. Now, Yolanda is coming up. She will introduce herself. Second, that is not showing up. <laughs> yeah, let me just uh, get the monitor. I'll take my hand. You have to take yeah. away the duplication of the monitor. Thank you. I will help. He's not again, sorry. I can't get out. Ayla, can you please help me one second? I have some trouble to take the presentation.
Um, so I just wanted to uh, quickly um, show you some results of a project called uh, Wiki Africa that uh, has been involving uh, uh, a lot of uh, institutions and people and volunteers in the last years. In particular, I'm just going to present you a milestone that had been accomplished in 2012. Um, which is a, a 30,000 African contribution to Wikipedia and the Wikimedia projects. Uh, the idea behind it is really a pan-African idea. So the concept of this project is to link institution people, pe um, uh, volunteers, people that are interested uh, in a similar topic or they can contribute in different ways to produce uh, um, a common milestone and to improve uh, uh, quality and quantity of African content on Wikipedia. Um, the project was uh, mainly based uh, on the idea of uh, uh, facilitating the contribution of institution to Wikipedia. Um, it is a GLAM project, a Wiki GLAM project, but uh, uh, with a very mm, a specific approach because our aim was uh, to systematically try to bring as many institutions as possible within the project. Um, also, what we like of, of this idea of participation is really um, related to indirect contribution. So institutions are invited to choose the license. And this is uh, at least one of the advantages, unfortunately, but an advantage of um, copyright is that institutions and people are actually entitled to make a decision. And we ask them to decide to share their knowledge. Um, what we did uh, with uh, the knowledge they released uh, was to upload it on, uh, on Wikipedia, on Wikimedia Commons, uh, on uh, Wikisource, accord according to the kind of uh, uh, content. And of course, uh, the other step was uh, to involve the community in using this content, um, uh, which is actually the plus value of uh, creating a collaboration among institutions and, uh, and people, is really uh, focusing on a theme and trying to reach the people that are interested in that theme or can be, uh, uh, can be nourished by this documentation. Uh, the project was started in 2006. It was a project uh, initiated by a foundation uh, in Italy called uh, Lettera 27 in collaboration with uh, uh, Wikimedia Italy. And, uh, through time, there have been quite a few events, some collaboration, but it was really in 2011 that there was the turning point in which we, we created a partnership with uh, the Africa Center. Uh, Ayla is, uh, represents the, um, uh, the Africa Center and she's the project manager uh, of the Af Wiki Africa project for them. And we started working also with new collaboration involving Wikimedia chapter, inviting them to join the project. And also we started a pilot to, to see how those collaborations with the institutions could be facilitated. And what happened is actually uh, the work produced uh, uh, around 100 collaboration with institutions and uh, we also tested different kind of ways in which you can contribute. We wanted to reach our 30,000 milestone so we for example created a data set of uh, uh, municipalities in Botswana and we uploaded it in different uh, uh, Wikipedia in different languages. Uh, we also um, uh, invited other Wikipedians to contribute, activating the community. And um, you can find uh, online on Outreach also an overview of which are the different steps that institutions have taken within the project. So there are institutions that have endorsed the project, that have uh, supported it uh, by saying we, uh, we want to support this kind of idea, we share the idea of, uh, uh, we want to share our knowledge and we want to um, uh, support the idea of having more uh, uh, content related to Africa on Wikipedia and the Wikimedia project. Then we have an uh, institution that we actually got their Creative Commons attribution share like license uh, uh, put on their website with a uh, uh, HTML code, so a machine readable uh, license in their website. And, uh, and then uh, they contributed to Wikipedia. We, in the majority of the cases, we made directly the uploads for them because in uh, some other country was a problem or it was technically more efficient. And uh, the last step was the uh, evaluation. So all the institutions listed uh, uh, among, well, in the evaluation um, are actually institutions that have also a case study on, uh, on the Wikipedia pages. Sorry, it just keep, it only arrives to Cameroon, <laughs> but actually the list is longer. Um, so basically, this is a portrait of the kind of, uh, um, uh, it's a really a draft idea. Uh, of course, we had a, a quantitative milestone. So the easiest way to reach it was to involve a, a big data set. And uh, the bigger um, institu the, the institution that already have digitalized content online are major institution in Europe, uh, in, or, nor, in North uh, America, that uh, already, uh, some of them already contribute to Wikipedia. And uh, what we did was to focus on African content and make sure it was available. Uh, 
um, what is interesting about the project is this is a report from March, and the number actually uh, is increasing. And this is the, the report uh, from July. So looking at the institution and how the content is, uh, is used, you can see also an increase in uh, reusing content. Um, the categories and uh, the way we measure and we track uh, the institution is based on, on template and on the fact that attribution have to be given to institution. So uh, Creative Commons licenses on website and uh, images of collection, images of archives. But uh, also this is uh, um, around 3,000 images from Douala uh, released by Douala Art uh, were uploaded uh, on Wikimedia Commons. And also some of the best results are very small uh, uh, images, uh, quantity of images, uh, for example, those one provided by the National Gallery of, uh, Gallery of Zimbabwe. I'm only showing the images because it's more photogenic, but we also have uh, develop article using uh, content coming from institution. So uh, it was ob obviously a project that was made, was possible because of the institution involved and obviously all the volunteers. Thank you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> showing the email. <laughs> um, Hello, first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming. Um, I know this is the last session of the conference, but let me just say that next year, I think Africa should come first, don't you think? Yeah. Right? So when you talk to the next you know, program committee, push them, because we want to see more Africa front-loaded next time. And I just want to tell you about this program with Wikipedia Zero. Just so you know, the first place on the planet we launched this program was in Africa in Uganda, so we really think Africa is important and is the future. But before I go into this, if you don't know what Wikipedia Zero is, simply put, it's making sure that Wikipedia is available on your mobile phone for free. And cost is a huge barrier for people in the developing world, and we wanna to try to reduce all those barriers. And I wanna, when I get into this presentation, I'm, I'm starting with cost, but I'm gonna argue that Zero means a lot more, because there are so many barriers to get people involved in the projects. And what we're trying to do, the big focus of this program is really about access. We feel like we need to get people in the door. We need, to, we need to get them exposed to Wikipedia, get them to understand that this is their project, and hopefully, and what we're gonna try to do is get them to contribute. So there are three main things I'm gonna cover. Where we are with this program, what we've learned, and what we think we need to do next. So Wikipedia is available in all of these countries in the world. I can't even like color this map fast enough. We just launched in India two weeks ago. So we are moving very, very quickly. We have about five, six launches that are ready to go in the next two or three months. A couple of those are gonna be in Africa. So right now, you know, our, whole, our plan is basically to blanket the entire planet and make sure everyone has free access to Wikipedia. And you can see it took a little time. This program started, our first launch was April 4th of 2012. You know, when it takes a little bit of time, we kind of had to like get the word out, do a lot of testing technically to make sure it was working well. But now you can see we're starting to have exponential growth. Um, even with this number right here, we went from about three million page views per month in our program in February. Um, we were about 13, 14 million page views just in June. And I've been looking at the last numbers, we're at 20 million now, 20 to 20 million. And now we have access to about half a billion people on the planet. Right now we've launched to a little over more than half of that, but you know, we're slowly increasing our reach. And like I said, you know, we have got page views up seven times over the last half year, and we're at 17 countries and counting. Now you're probably thinking, hey, you know, Cool's just launching a bunch of things with you know, his team, and that's why they're getting more page views, but that's not just the case we're seeing actually organic growth. So once the program is up there, people are actually getting to use it, word of mouth spreads. We're seeing more and more growth within the countries we've already launched at. And I think this is what's really surprising for us. Um, we're seeing most of the growth actually happening in Africa. 
Um, part of it is because we did launch there first, but we're actually seeing even more of an impact in smaller countries. Um, we need to do a lot of studies of why that's the case, but in some of these countries, it's more than a third of the page views to mobile are through zero. And in one of the cases right now, if this growth continues, right now, Botswana, more page views are seen on zero than just on the regular mobile site. I mean, it's the same thing, but this is the free access version. And so, you know, hopefully we're gonna see more and more of this where really everybody, you know, their entry point is basically no barrier for cost when they're, when they're accessing Wikipedia. So some of the things that we've learned. Now, we're just kind of starting. We just did a little bit of research, both qualitative and quantitative. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on yet, but we're starting to see some patterns. And because of this, you know, it's opening up, you know, different questions, things we want to figure out a little bit more so we can be much more effective in how we're doing this program. So this is an interesting thought that kind of came up is like, you know, we, we still have to question, do people actually understand what Wikipedia is? And in a lot of countries in the developing world, in particular in Africa, there's not that history of what is an encyclopedia. And these are similar to the numbers that Isla came up with in South Africa, but we did some surveys also in Botswana and Uganda, and only about a third of the people actually have used Wikipedia before, um, or actually kind of really know what it is. Another third have heard of it. So, you know, two thirds of the people in these countries, and this is Uganda, Botswana, and South Africa, even really kind of have an idea what Wikipedia is at all, but really haven't used it that much. Um, and these are the more developed countries in Africa. Like Uganda is very tech savvy, Botswana and South Africa, like their GDP, you know, it's on, you know, per capita is higher on the scale compared to other countries in the region. So learning about Wikipedia is very different on how people come about this um, in the developing world, especially in Africa, as compared to probably, you know, most people in the developed world, like Europe, Japan, um, and North America. So there is that factor of Google. People actually, you know, obviously through discovery will find Wikipedia, but not to the same extent as it is in Africa. And people really rely on their family and friends, and the mobile operators we partner with, they actually have a lot of influence on what people see and actually their user behavior and what types of applications they use. So people do say they're really interested in education. Like we've done this, this poll, this is in Botswana and Uganda, and everyone says like education is near the top of their list. However, this is what they really wanna look for. It's mostly entertainment and sports, pop culture type stuff. I don't think this is different than anywhere else on the planet. So, you know, it gets us to think, you know, what is the best way to make sure people, you know, are exposed to Wikipedia and what is that entry point? So, with these things in mind, you know, we try to think about what should we do next. So, one of the key things is delivery. We need to get to people the way they, they want to be reached, you know, thinking about their user behavior. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about this. Dan is following up and he's going to talk about one of the specific things that we're working on to reach the vast majority of people in Africa. But as you can tell, you know, there are a lot of ways that we can do, not just, there's not just mobile web, we, we're developing a J2ME app right now for people that have low-end phones, um, S40 phones, the old Nokia phones. Um, we always have to do more exposure, making sure people can see us available through apps. Um, we have to have a tablet strategy, obviously, and that will probably lead to more contribution, and even offline. Like I said, our whole goal is to make sure that we reach as many people with this program. And going through working with operators, we work with them quite a bit, you know, making sure that people see what Wikipedia is. We're still trying to figure out the effective, uh, effectiveness of this directly, but, you know, from the studies that we've had so far in the surveys, we know that people see these things. And we're trying a whole bunch of different things. Like, if you look at this on the right side, this is a billboard that was, you know, on the streets of Kampala. There's a hundred of these out there just letting people know they could access free knowledge. And then in different portals across Africa, we're having the operators, you know, publicize that Wikipedia is available as a service on the internet, and obviously that's gonna lead to their accessing it on a mobile phone. This is also a big thing for us that we need a lot of help in. And, you know, I wanna have a lot of discussions with community members about this, but one of the big things that has come up is that family, friends, and even, you know, educational in institutions have a big influence on what people use on the internet and how they perceive it. 
So we need to do a lot more grassroots awareness. It's not something that the foundation is really capable of doing. So this really has to be a collaborative effort. Another thing is something that we've talked to a lot of people, it also came out in our surveys, the content has to be local and relevant. And you know, I think feature articles are great, but you know, you know, if they're all about kind of like, you know, Western content. Ironically, I was trying to pull up a page of a feature article that didn't mention thing about Africa, but the last three days were all about like, you know, some uh, Europeans going into Africa. So it was a little relevant, but mostly when it comes up, it has nothing to do with what people are interested in these countries. So this is something that we have to think about. I mean, maybe we have to start working with local community members, have tailored um, entry points. So when people access Wikipedia, you know, they're seeing things that are really relevant to their local lives, their daily lives. And this is probably even a bigger step, is perhaps we need to even rethink content. I mean, this is something that I've been kind of talking about with a lot of people here, is that when you access, like, Wikipedia on your mobile phone, I think there's two issues. You know, you don't have a lot of screen space, and a lot of the people that use, you know, mobile phones in Africa, I mean, they're using very small candy bar phones. Um, they don't have a lot of um, ability to kind of look at a lot of content on it. And then there's kind of needs to be a simpler point, because, like, if you see something like this, you know, it could actually, um, you know, be very off-putting. It's, 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 it's just so foreign to them. Like, maybe we need to make these articles a little bit simpler, or there's got to be a summary. I'm just throwing that idea out there, because if people feel like they're more comfortable, like they're seeing things and they can get through them much more easily, we believe that, you know, that's going to lead to more discovery and getting more deeper into Wikipedia articles in the future. So, like I said, these are some starting points. What I want to do is kind of, you know, get people thinking and discussing these things. So, like these kids are saying, they want free knowledge for all. And that's what we're going to do next. Thank you. Are we going to do this now or after? After, OK. All right, uh, I'm Dan Foy. I'm also working at the Wikimedia Foundation. I work with Cool on Wikipedia Zero. So what I want to talk about uh, today is uh, Wikipedia via text in Africa. And um, let's see. So what uh, this program, what we're looking at is, uh, is you know, in Africa, mobile phones are, are widely available. I mean, most everybody in Africa has a mobile phone. I think there's actually more SIM cards in Africa than there are Africans. So uh, in order to reach this many people, uh, is not to rely on desktops and laptops, but really focus heavily on the mobile phones. Uh, but even on the mobile phones, in some areas, up to 90% of people uh, can't or don't use the internet with their mobile phone. And the phone, what, what's typical uh, is, is the simple candy bar phone. It's, it's a feature phone, and, which is just a dumb phone. It, it does voice, it does SMS, um, it costs very little. I've been in South Africa picking these things up for like $10 US. Uh, they do have very long battery life, and that's a big benefit when you're your access to electricity or is maybe more limited in, in the rural areas. Uh, but yeah, it, it doesn't really support the mobile internet at all. Uh, but they're very widespread. Uh, again, infrastructure, uh, some of the areas, there's just not very good coverage of mobile. I mean, it works okay for voice and text, but in terms of data, I mean, we just have uh, often 2G, you know, is, is much more widespread. Where here in the in the West, it's it's just strictly, uh, you know, 3G and up. So, and the behavior is different as well. Uh, in the U.S. and Europe, we're used to uh, having a prepaid plan. I mean, having a plan that's a subscription that has a you know very high cap. Uh, for in Africa, we're talking about prepaid for everything. Uh, through airtime, 
so uh, the cost uh, of the airtime, they always, when they do access data, it is, it is about getting, uh, it's per megabyte. So everything they're doing, it, it is on the clock, essentially. And bet between that and the mobile form factor, it really doesn't encourage casual browsing and discovery the way we're accustomed to on the internet with laptops and desktops and cell phones that have you know, unlimited data plans. So finding um, sites and using Google is, is not so common. Mostly it's using Facebook and WhatsApp and just the things that everybody else uses. So to reach everybody, uh, what we figure a solution is is Wikipedia via, via text message uh, which uses the technologies of USSD and SMS. And the nice thing is this is fully compatible, both hardware and software, with every phone out there. So with this, so what is USSD? In the, in the US, it's pretty much, people don't really know what this is, but when you have, uh, when you're using uh, prepaid plans, everyone goes down and buys airtime and they punch in the number they dial a certain number that, that asks them what their, um, you know, the, the pin in order in to add their time in, and they enter that, and then they get more air time. So, so they're, everyone's very used to doing this because this is how they use their phones. And so the USSD is really just a numerical choice menu uh, where it comes up and it gives you options. It's, a, it's the simple way to interact with the phone on a, on a text scrolling menu. Um, for, for us to use it for Wikipedia, uh, we, that's th that interaction part, we, we are going to leverage to navigate to the article and to the area of the article that they want to see. And once they do navigate there, uh, we can deliver actually multiple SMS messages that make up about a screen full of text of that Wikipedia article and deliver that to them. Um, and these are the actual articles that are on Wikipedia that you see on them on the internet or anywhere else, uh, it's just formatted differently for phones that aren't capable of using the internet. So in general, how this works is we are partnering with a, uh, an open source company called Prekelt in South Africa. They, they've been working on a lot of SMS technologies and they've written an application that draws from both Wikipedia and ties in to the mobile operators uh, back-end systems so that so the system can work with the USSD menuing. So when this actually happens on the flow is a customer would dial in a certain access code like star wiki pound and then the phone would come back and say what do you want to search Wikipedia for and then they could enter with their little keypad you know in this case Africa. Okay and it will come back with with a the USSD menu with the, the number of cho choices they have. This is really what is to our, to using it on, on the internet is the disambiguation menu. So they have the choice of what specific article they're talking about uh, within Wikipedia. And they, so they would press like number one in this case. And then it comes back with another menu. You know, this comes up with essentially the, um, sections within that article are shown as another menu. So in this case, they can choose in all, on all these subjects. So they're essentially drilling down into the article that they want in order to get the content they're interested in. So in, the, in this case, they pressed any one of these, then at that point, SMS would take over. We would send about three or four concatenated messages and they would have about a screen full of text that was a start, that was that section of that article. So right now, we, we actually have a working version of this. And uh, it, we've used it on phones. Uh, everything seems to work pretty well. Uh, but it is a pilot. It's, been, it's untested. Uh, we are in, in discussion with multiple carriers to actually deploy this. And I think we have two or three that are interested. And we are uh, just getting those the final details done so that we can start uh, trying this out. So what we hope to learn from these pilots is uh, 
you know, how, how interested are people in using this on, on, a mobile, on a essentially a candy bar phone? Um, how do they, and if they, when they start using it, do they complete using it? Do they get the article that they want? Uh, and also to understand uh, the, any technology and, and server uh, demands that we need in order to scale this out since it's never been done before. So anyway, that's our project right now. Uh, we, we hope to see some pilots launch uh, a little later this year and uh, we'll get back with results on this. So thank you. Hello, hello again for people uh, already uh, on the um, morning presentation. Um, I will uh, just present you Afripedia, um, a project to provide offline access to Wikimedia content to help for contribution on Wikimedia project in the French-speaking area, Africa. I try to not speak uh, too much. Maybe you can, uh, Kiwix guy, <laughs> do you have the plug computer? <laughs> if you can have Kiwix network access on your computer, just try to connect and go on any uh, website and you will see Afripedia project. Where is the, the um, the project is in French-speaking Africa uh, because French-speaking Africa is, uh, has, has very bad internet access, very few editors on Wikimedia projects, no Wikimedia community or project focused on uh, this area, and a large part of uh, French-speaking people in the world. Project started on, um, Wiki, in Wikimania Haifa some years ago. We imagine the project between Kiwix, the offline uh, developers, and Wikimedia France. The next year, we buy the partnership with Kiwix, Wikimedia France, and two um, cultural and educational um, uh, institutes related to French speaking uh, in the world. How um, is the, the project? Is offline access to Wikimedia content, uh, Wikipedia, Wikisource, any other content, uh, by Wi-Fi access, by computer installation, by intranet provider. And if you have uh, Wi-Fi access to uh, Wikipedia offline by Kiwix plug, you just arrive on this kind of page and choose Wikipedia or Wikisource, click and go to the offline um, encyclopedia or wiki source. How? Uh, the second part of the project is to have training sessions for professional trainers in African universities. Uh, we organized two training sessions uh, in the last year, one in Abidjan, one in Kinshasa, to um, train some people from all the countries with um, a blue star. So it's a uh, uh, 13 countries uh, with trainers in, uh, in the two training sessions. The photo family from Abidjan, and please note that we have more than 10% of women in the <laughs> training session, and the Kinshasa training session. The key word of the project is dissemination of content and dissemination of training. Um, we train trainers, and trainers train other people. Um, you have just two photos of Wikipedia and Afripedia presentation for students in Chad and uh, Niger. Um, some Wikipedia offline on a school computer in Mali. Uh, some uh, training session on, um, Bama in Bamako University in Mali, organized every week by um, um, the Malian um, uh, trainers, 
and we try to have the to have uh, the better impact on Wikimedia projects. Um, you can just read uh, some um, some uh, facts about the, uh, the programs. We train uh, 36 people, and they train more than 100 people during the last year. And these people write uh, more than uh, 100 new articles and a lot of exist existing uh, articles. And we have um, half a, a million uh, bytes uh, added on Wikimedia project. And now we have um, maybe a new community in, in um, African countries. And Wikipedia offline is available in all the university um, where people um, were, were in the training session. So the key word is the dissemination and impact. Um, and we, we have some uh, articles, photos, as you see. What trends and what trends not on the, on the project? Um, we have a lot of enthusiasm of people. Um, we fit with uh, Wikimedia values and objectives. You, we need a lot of sustaining to, to help people. Um, we know that the project is a, an answer for some local issues, uh, access to uh, knowledge, access to documentation, access to, um, to a lot of knowledge that don't have uh, uh, without Wikipedia. Uh, we know that it is a, a starting point for other projects. We, we have some uh, very interesting uh, uh, contacts for GLAM's project, for example. Uh, but this is a project which needs more attention, more, more sustain, more investment by, um, by, by Wikipedians on the project to help new contributors, by uh, trainers to invest them more in the project, by chapters to provide more uh, investment, by all the Wikimedia movement to, to sustain the project. Um, we are very happy to see maybe a new community of contributors in construction, especially in Mali, which uh, runs very good. We, we are very balanced for autonomous of contributors. It's very difficult for them to be alone, the trainers we train, alone in their university, in their country, and we are online, only online to help them. Uh, it's not easy to organize, very, very difficult to organize a session and sustain for the, the project. It's not easy to monitor without people from uh, Afripedia project on the ground. We are only on, uh, on support. And it's not easy every day to work with very administrative partners to, uh, to um, Wikipedia is a, is a um, big old world and administrative um, partners are not. So it's a very um, uh, a project with a lot of um, capacity but uh, needs more, more attention. Um, another very important thing is to document the project and uh, we uh, we pay uh, a big uh, attention to document the project um, on, on Wikipedia, on French Wikipedia today, and probably uh, later on a dedicated uh, website. Um, if you are interested, just see uh, Projet Afripedia on French Wikipedia and related page on the, on, the, on the project. And you can uh, see and ask and speak with us um, here or um, with Kiwix developer or on Twitter with the, the um, Afripedia account. Thank you. I'm Douglas, I'm from uh, Wikimedia Chapter South Africa, and I'm talking about uh, one of the first big projects that Wikimedia Chapter South Africa ever did, which is the Wiki Loves Monuments um, competition. Uh, 
the idea for us to host this competition sort of first really crystallized in our minds um, when uh, Martin, one of, the, one of our members, who is also a member of the Belgian chapter, decided to move to South Africa in 2012, 2011, and suggested that we uh, join in in this competition, this international competition of, of Wiki Loves Monuments International. And, and, and we, we really liked the idea, we really caught on to it, and we, re and we decided to run with it. And it, it has turned out quite well for us, and we are running it again this year and plan to run it um, at least for the next three years, moving ahead in the future. So first, our objectives um, with this project. Uh, the first objective is the one objective that I suppose all chapters have with regards to organizing a, a Wiki Loves Monuments event, and that is to increase the quality and quantity of images um, for articles in both Wikipedia but also on the commons and specifically of monuments in their respective countries. Um, so this has a, a knock-on effect of improving the quality of articles in Wikipedia and all that other jazz that you guys are fully aware of. The second objective that we had, which is, um, uh, I'm not so sure how many other chapters also had this objective, but which, which we sort of really focused on, was using this competition as a way to effectively connect with our uh, membership, as well as to expand the membership of exist of um, expand our membership of Wikipedia editors in South Africa. So, so use, using it as a form of outreach to the existing Wikipedia uh, editors in South Africa, but also introduce the concept of editing Wikipedia to folks in South Africa in general and at large, and thereby expand the um, number of editors in South Africa. So um, in order to make this happen, we need to activate a number of partnerships. The first and most important partnership was activating one with uh, Heritage Council South Africa. So in, we needed to do that in order to gain access to the list of heritage sites. Um, we managed to get the list. It was rather long, about 40,000 uh, heritage sites throughout South Africa. Thankfully, we had a, a, a member in, in Wikimedia Chapter South Africa, who's very knowledgeable about um, data systems. So we were able to set that up, but we also decided to cut down that list and only focus on the top 3,000. Uh, so the first three tiers. So they were originally there five tiers, we focused on the first three tiers, that got us down to 3,000 monuments to look at and focus at, put them up on, on the Wiki Loves Monuments website, where members of the public can access them, see what monuments are in their local area, see the corresponding code. We built that into a submissions form uh, on Wikicommons um, to sort of streamline the process of um, entering the competition. Uh, the second partner we, well, we, we, within Heritage, we also um, had a, a more specific relationship with Heritage Western Cape. Uh, Western Cape is one of the nine provinces of South Africa. And they got very excited with this particular project and actually saw it as a way for them to keep tabs of the status of monuments within the province. Um, uh, within South Africa, the, uh, about a third of all monuments, at least within the top 3,000, are located in the Western Cape. So Heritage Western Cape has got quite a large job. And in order to help facilitate and build this relationship, they agreed to sponsor us 5,000 Rand, about $500, to contribute towards prize money. So we um, added on an additional prize um, to that extent to help encourage more people in the Western Cape to participate. Um, we also had some other smaller partners, such as um, Art South Africa, which agreed to uh, uh, provide us with some, some annual subscriptions for, for winners as well. Um, prizes. Uh, the, the, the national prizes basically came from a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation, so thank you everyone for that. Um, then, also, as I mentioned before, we also had a regional prize just for the Western Cape, which was supplied by Heritage Western Cape, $500. Um, West Heritage Western Cape has requested that, uh, well, we've entered an agreement with Heritage Western Cape to expand their support um, of the competition, so they're now giving us uh, 15,000 Rand every year. That's about $1,500, $1, one, $150 uh, for prizes, also focusing on the Western Cape, and they want to do that for the next three years. So thank you again on the Heritage Western Cape. Uh, so throwing that out to the universe, hopefully they can, they can hear that. Um, and Art South Africa is also continuing our support. Moving ahead in the future, we would like to investigate the opportunities of expanding partnerships. Also, a shout out to the Africa Project. They've also supported us on this and provided much, very valuable support. 
Um, oh, yes, I just want to go back to prizes. Uh, we decided to divide basically three prizes in the national level, just looking at the quality of images. This year, though, we're expanding that also to the number of images. I know that in the panel today, and um, the Wiki, Wiki Loves Monuments panel, there was uh, some discouragement of, of using quantity of articles as a, as a prize category. We didn't have that last year, so we're sort of interested to experiment to see how that'll pan out this year. Uh, now, with regard to judges, we made the decision to use uh, external judges. So none of us in Wikimedia South Africa um, were judges. Uh, and partly, part of the reason for that is because we wanted to take part in the competition. I mean, although within the board of directors, we made a policy decision that we would not be eligible to receive prize money, but we still wanted to submit images um, to help increase the number and quality of images being submitted in the competition. Um, the judges uh, were photographers, respected photographers in South Africa, and the judging process was conducted in two, two rounds. So the first round, judges would select the top 20 photographs from all submissions, um, and then in the second round, those submissions would be given to them to rate uh, along three metrics. So the first, the first one was um, aesthetic appeal, the second was, was uh, um, uh, composition of the photograph, and the third and final one was the sense of feel that um, these photographs gave the viewer of being at the location. And then that would be sort of scored up, tallied up, and then the total points would all be um, calculated, and that's how we would select sort of our top three winners. Um, actually making the competition happen, we notified folks uh, primarily using banner ads, and also um, by trying to contact the media, we had less traction with the media. One of the big learnings we had there was a necessity of drawing up our own internal um, mailing list, media list, contact list, which we've done now. We've got about 90 contacts there of media contacts within South Africa, and we're using that this year. Um, with regards to the banner ads, we found that that was actually very successful at um, activating uh, local editors and informing them of events. Uh, so for example, when we had our launch event on the 1st of September, we went to the Castle, uh, Castle of Good Hope, which is one of the oldest buildings in Southern Africa. Um, we had a, a very good attendance of editors um, joining us for that event. Um, and, that's, and that's something we'd really like to use in the future, not just for Wikimedia, uh, Wiki Loves Monuments, but for our, our meetups, for um, uh, other projects that we do, for informing people wiki and dabas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We found that it was, it was very, very useful. And this, this project really gave, gave us an opportunity to truly experiment with the use of banners for the, the first time on a, on a really local level. It's something that I know other chapters got a lot of experience with already. Um, we also decided to organize a whole lot of on-the-ground events, such as treasure hunts. And we had a, four in total, two in the Western Cape, one in Johannesburg and another one in Kimberley. Um, this is a map of uh, the one in, one of the first ones in Cape Town. Um, and actually that, that street, Long Street, in which we were walking down, uh, that area of Cape Town has got something like, I think it was a third or sort of a 200 or 300 monuments along there, which is, uh, is about 10% of all of the monuments in the Western Cape. Uh, so it was, a, it was a very monument-rich environment, and people just went nuts taking photographs there. And in fact, um, the second event, we went to the same location, but the other side of the city bowl, so, so we could get sort of a, a full spectrum of all the monuments in that area. Keep it nice and local, keep the logistics simple. Um, and this is where the upload monument was held. We also held an upload um, marathon. Um, we were able to form a, an agreement with the Cape Town Partnership to use, which is a, a local organization within the city of Cape Town, to use one of their um, centers to conduct the upload marathon. We got that bandwidth access, and um, we had a, a full day of uploading stuff. One of our learnings from this was that having an upload marathon on a separate day from a treasure hunt is unnecessary and could well be counterproductive. Uh, we discovered in Kimberley that actually having the upload marathon and the treasure hunt on the same day was far more effective because you don't need very much time to do a treasure hunt. It's only about two hours, especially if you're in a very monument-rich area, which is quite small geographically. And also, if you finish off at a place, you, you're basically keeping the same group of people. You've got a much greater degree of um, people actually submitting entries into the competition, and you're there to help them just after they've taken their photographs. It's on their minds. 
Um, so that was a, a learning for us moving ahead in the future. We also also doing an agreement with we're also doing an agreement with um, uh, Heritage Western Cape to use libraries as upload nexus uh, upload points throughout the province for the Western Cape. Um, we had a total of 1,000. 854 submissions. Now we're aiming this year to go for about 5,000. Fingers crossed we'll reach there. Um, and just want to show you a, a couple of the, give you a feel of some of the better photographs that were taken during the event and show you the first and second prize. Now this is the, the second prize winner. Uh, this picture actually made it onto the front cover of Art South Africa. Um, so that was sort of some nice exposure. And that's the first prize winner. Thank you very much. Sorry, my PC doesn't like uh, this system. Just uh, reducing the embarrassment. <laughs> Can we maybe start some questions uh, over there while we're looking for the presentation? We're gonna, this is going to be the last uh, longer presentation, and then we're going to uh, invite some of the people that we already addressed to um, make just a, a short statement about, about some of the projects they are working on. So that we're going to have uh, still other uh, four people, I think, uh, working on. Can you please turn the light? Thank you. Um, Yes, please. Um, Ayla, can you turn on the microphone there? <laughs> or is it not possible? Hello. That works. They work. Okay. They work. Cool. Please. <laughs> um, I have two questions for Kul. Um, in one of your slides, uh, there was a sudden spike of users. Yeah, what caused that spike? Um, I probably was the, one of the early ones about, you know, just kind of the growth, and it was probably a launch. So when we do a new launch, we have access to a whole bunch more new people. So do you know um, which country caused that spike? Yeah, it, so um, I don't have the slide here, but, like, I can send them, to, I'll put them, post them publicly. But, you know, it actually says at the bottom, like, you know, there will be a launch. And it'll say, like, where the launch is, whether it's, like, you know, um, Vimplecom or something in Russia. And they'll see so at it that was point. Russia. That the big Russia. one, big one was Russia. Yeah, and then we're we're gonna have to add another one because India just launched, and we have another big spike. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, second question: If someone uh, from, uh, for for instance, from rural Africa is using Wikipedia Zero, and uh, finds a bug or needs some help, who's his contact person? Dan. They should call Dan at his home at any hour of the day and report that bug. <laughs> they could send it to, like, we're, we're public, like, you know, yeah. um, they can send it to us. How? Our email, you could Twitter, anything, but. No, I, I go don't, the, yeah, but. Go to the staff page on. Uh, no, 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 not me. Yeah. yeah. The, the person So we, we are actually thinking of adding the feedback loop, you know, where people could report that. You know, we, we we're testing, the thing is it's kind of difficult because on a lot of the small, mm -hmm. you know, low-end phones, it's, it's, it takes up too much screen space, you know? But we do have to find a better way. I mean, we've just, we've actually been working with community members right now. Like, we've been reaching out to a lot of them and saying, you know, just let us know, email us. They'll send us screenshots back and forth. Um, we don't have a great way yet of just including, like, you know, the mass public. I mean, but, you know, we'll take emails at any time, any way you want to contact us. Do but, um, local And like carriers, I said, Dan's personal home phone number, I will list on the wiki. Um, do local... When there is a, a service like this that is uh, set up and advertised by the, the mobile carrier, people usually go to and call the, the mobile carrier. So you should definitely uh, set up some process with them 
uh, so they report feedback to you. Yeah, we do that. And, and before we launch, we also set up a, a test, live test where, we, where they run through, the, through their operation. And just, you know, I'm not trying to, like, bash carriers in particular, but they, they run the gamut in terms of, like, how responsive they are. Like, some, you know, they'll even change their IP range without telling us. And, you know, people aren't getting banners. They don't know it's free. And we're trying to run some more automated testing. But, you know, we're ultimately responsible for it. So even though the operators will inform us sometimes, we, they're not completely reliable. It, it just depends. Some of them are very good. Some of them aren't. And we're getting more and more at the same time. So, I mean, it's, it's better to just contact us as well. OK, I give the floor to Lisa. Yeah. Hello. OK, um, I think I'm back. Well, firstly, I want to thank all of you for coming through to this Africa panel um, discussion. I see that's not many of you, but yeah, thanks for making the effort to come through. Before I start this uh, presentation on Jobekpedia, I just wanted to discuss um, a follow-up on the questions that I posted to Sue Gardner in the morning about uh, the Wikimedia Foundation strategy towards Africa and um, the perceived barriers with uh, the uh, Wikimedia Foundation and groups from Africa dealing with the foundation. Um, we do not want to take a negative approach towards the foundation. We believe that foundation has done a very good job in Africa and they are continuing to, to doing a good job in Africa. And uh, this is in fact us raising our hands and saying here we are to partner with the foundation in Africa to do even better job or uh, to take it to the next level in terms of activating communities. And in fact, this panel uh, will attest to that. Um, to the energies that are there on the ground. Therefore, it's a round of applause for Wikimedia Foundation up to so far. And uh, thank you for looking at Africa. Thank you for not getting tired. Thank you for uh, being there as much as you can when we need you guys to be there. Because as the panelists have already said, the greatest growth hasn't started yet in Africa, and it's going to need or require all the resources that we have uh, to concentrate there. That having been said, I'll move on to one of um, my, um, my passion in Johannesburg that has been uh, Jobekpedia, and this is a culmination of six months worth of work that we did, and uh, which is starting to pay off. Firstly, before I start presenting that, I'd like to say thank you to David Richfield who helped me to do this. And um, we had this presentation yesterday together jointly on one of our uh, presentation and Isla thought it would be a good idea to have it on this panel again. So what is Jobekpedia? The concept of Jobekpedia is based on uh, Monmouthpedia, which we all know, and uh, basically, it had very good success. Well, I'm sure if you ask different people, some will think not so good, some will think very good. Um, but now we are applying that concept into uh, South Africa in Johannesburg, and that's our famous city skyline, which will feature on this presentation very much. So what are we aiming with the pilot? So what we did is we got together with a group of uh, volunteers and decided it would be a good idea to have a pilot of Jobekpedia and uh, found that uh, we've got some difficulties. Um, the, there is a perceived weakness of QR coding and um, what impact it has on communities and we thought Let's try it. It might actually give us a different uh, results. So we're not here to prove the efficiency of QR coding at all. We are here to try and build Wikimedia community in South Africa using this project and the concept. And we're trying to establish the relationships with local GLAMs uh, in uh, Johannesburg. So what we had to do was to come up with a list of sites that the local uh, the local government would allow us to go on to and to tag and to 
build awareness around them. And uh, we got 12 sites approved for, for with, within Johannesburg. And amongst these, uh, as you will see, um, is um, Desmond Tutu's house in Soweto, the uh, very famous, um, the, one of the very famous elder, elder person in South Africa. And we've got uh, also Rahima Musa's house, who was one of the ladies as this being uh, on Friday, be, having been a women's uh, month day, uh, women's day in South Africa, uh, was one of the most influential women uh, of the f one of the four women who marched into unions building to um, complain about the past laws in 1956 in South Africa. So that uh, we're going into these houses which have got significant historical impact in South Africa and we're putting a QR code uh, plaque next to it, next to an existing blue plaque, which is a program that is being run by the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation and the Johannesburg, the city of Johannesburg in commemorating and, um, these important sites. So those 12 were approved. And uh, these are some of the pictures of the 12 sites that were approved that we have put in uh, plaques on. Uh, as you can see on the Rahima Musa plaque on the uh, third row on the, towards the right, Next to it is a Jobekpedia plaque, next to the blue plaque. So, what legal issues have we got um, in any uh, heritage and uh, project that, re that involves multiple parties, there will be some legal issues. And we did have our fair share of legal issues. We got a very interesting um, letter from a contractor who was contracted by the city of Johannesburg to do uh, some of the heritage projects and uh, she thought uh, that we might have taken her idea and use it for benefit and thought that maybe we should consider buying this concept from her. So we looked at her uh, patent and we thought, hmm, what is it that you're really saying we took uh, that we require to buy from you? Uh, her idea was a a, a phone-led uh, tour, heritage tour. So you go into a heritage place, you look at a code, it's got a phone number, you call into that, it'll tell what the, what the heritage area is and it'll give you other tips on guided tours along the way. So we thought, mm -mm, that is not what we're doing. So we don't believe you've got a case, so we put in a nice uh, Wikimedia ZA lo letterhead logo with my signature there, haha. <laughs> Uh, and we wrote back to her and said, uh, and we say that, please remember we are a volunteer driven nonprofit and we do not, we're not getting money out of this project. We looked at your uh, patent and we do not think that it has anything to do with cure coding. In fact, if your patent was true on this, it would be true on every other project that has to do with uh, cell phone technology. Therefore, this is not the case. We are, we are confident that there is no infringement, but if you believe there is, please let us know. And that was the last we heard of her. Who are the stakeholders on Jobikpedia? <laughs> Who are the stakeholders in Jobikpedia? Well, I would like to mention the city of Johannesburg for allowing us to do this. Uh, the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation, I need to be quickly now, uh, Wikimedia South Africa, other Wikimedia chapters in particular, special thanks to the Wikimedia Switzerland for assisting us to get the plaques made. So the edit editathons that we have done so far, the first one was in the Museum Africa, which is a, mo uh, a famous museum in uh, South Africa, which is the largest Africana collection in Africa actually. The second one was uh, in Midlands High, which is a, one of the turning points of the Soweto Uprisal in June 16. And uh, at the center there is the director of immovable heritage uh, of the city of Johannesburg, who has been very uh, helpful. And this is the one we're very proud of. This is a record-breaking editathon we did at the Gandhi House in Johannesburg, where we had six languages editing at once on this, at, uh, on this uh, project about the Satyagraha house. That included Igbo from Nigeria. There are two events that we still need to do. 
And uh, we think those will be exciting. Um, what do the numbers say quickly? Two Heritage websites have now got CC by SA licensing thanks to Jovipedia, 19 new articles in seven wikis, 24 new photos into Commons, one new active editor in Zulu all under one month. So I will go through the challenges ahead. We think we will take this next to Cape Town if Douglas is up to it. Want to get more involved? Uh, visit our LEM page, and that's where it uh, Ends. Thank you very much. Can you just mention Vicky Ndaba while I take care of Okay, while they are setting up uh, the next slide, I just want to talk about a concept that we are working on as Wikimedia South Africa and most of the chapters in Africa. In fact, we had an interesting uh, discussion with at least five other chapters during this conference, which is Wiki in Daba. And uh, this is where we are planning to hold a, an, a, an African conference of as many Wiki, uh, Wikipedia editors in Africa that have been activated previously, that have never met, or have never discussed, and therefore don't have any ties with each other. And uh, we're planning to hold it next uh, year in, uh, in February, so, uh, it, we believe that it is, it is the logical next step into activating Africa and we would like as much support as we can get from the community, from the foundation and from all African uh, chapters and forming groups. If you are here, please come and talk to us. Let's make it happen. Thank you. We're really sorry that uh, the timetable kind of uh, uh, slipped a little bit, uh, shifted a bit, but uh, we wanted to make sure that all the people that we invited to talk uh, get the chance to actually say. So um, it's going to run uh, 15 minutes uh, later, so uh, if you don't mind, we're very happy that uh, you remain otherwise that we understand. So, what do we think about small languages, uh, communities, and small languages and communities? I think that they are awesome and they should actually be uh, encouraged. Uh, Jovipedia, for example, uh, was a very good uh, place where we got to activate and uh, create editors in small languages. And most of the people didn't even know that these uh, small, la small languages existed. And uh, the relevance of that in a, in a, in a movement like ours is, is immense, really. We have to start activating those ones as much as we can. And um, it's not easy. It's very, very difficult, but we have to try. Um, I think it's got its place. There is areas where it, they, we should definitely be translating, but um, if you have attended Peter's uh, uh, indigenous, uh, indigenous knowledge uh, discussion you, and, and other discussions we've been having with, uh, amongst ourselves, we do feel there's a lot of indigenous language we can produce and int introduce into Wikipedia. So translation, in my view, is not the only focus for, should not only be the focus for small languages. There's a lot of indigenous languages that can be brought into Wikipedia, which can then be translated into, Af into French, English, and other big languages. Yeah. Um, a, a good example of that would be uh, closer tribes in, in South Africa. So at the moment, actually, English Wikipedia is probably the best source for, for closer tribes, but the best, uh, 
reservoir of information on, on Hosa clan names um, is obviously with, um, amongst Hosa speakers. Um, so so one, one of the things that, um, if we can get a closer language Wikipedia up and running and alive, uh, a nice possible thing for them to work on would be closer clan names and their histories. I'm just going to give. Uh, I'm just going to be give the floor because we only have five minutes. They're going to close the session, so I just wanted to have the chance to also hear those two speakers. Uh, so uh, please, uh, oh. uh, you really have. Uh, so to make your statement. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all attending this uh, panel. Uh, basically, I'm just going to share one of the future ideas that I think that are feasible to be implemented within my country. My name is Warabile, I'm from Botswana, and basically, who are we? We are just a group of volunteers who are working in an initiation of a local uh, chapter of Wikimedia Botswana with the mission of engaging all sectors of Botswana and encouraging everyone to develop or to regenerate online content, to periodically edit on Wikipedia and to promote the use of free online resources. Uh, what are the results that we have so far achieved as the group, I mean, as, a, as an intending user group? One, uh, Orange Botswana has uh, been able to implement the issue of uh, the, the, the concept of Wikipedia Zero, or which uh, Kuhl has just mentioned here, of which has bad good statistics to access of Wikipedia. Secondly, we have the Botswana Wikipedia Challenge that was held in Botswana in partnership with Google and Wikimedia Kenya, of which I believe it has also set up a good background for our, for, 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 for our country in terms of recruiting potential volunteers. Lastly, uh, we have also held a Wikipedia editathon uh, sometimes after the Sutwana Wikipedia Challenge as a way of trying to fill up all the stops that we remain unfilled within the page. Uh, lastly, oh, I'll talk also about the, 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 the negative part. We have less uh, number of active contributors in the local chapter I mean, in the, in the local group, of which uh, uh, maybe for certain reasons I might be not knowing, but I mean, the, the, the platform has been set and the path have, has, been, has been set. Uh, Wikipedia editathon have been also taken, I mean, has also taken place. Therefore, it is upon a volunteer, I believe, to be, uh, to be followed up uh, to try to, to increase participation. Now what? We have come up with this idea, which we think can be feasible to be implemented to, as a way of monitoring and as a way of triggering uh, the backsliders, uh, I mean volunteers who have backslided from the, 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 the Susana Wikipedia challenge. The idea is that we want to collaborate pro this, I mean the Ministry of Education to glam institutions as a way of developing an and expanding the online cultural knowledge for schools around Botswana. Uh, one other idea or the concept behind this is that we also want to recruit students and to, uh, to recruit students to edit and write educational articles on Wikipedia. Lastly, this program is, I mean, this program is also, uh, will be also beneficial in a way that it will bring real-time collaboration between teacher and student participation in terms of writing good articles about the museums, the monuments, or the libraries, or information that is found within these institutions. Uh, now the cycle of collaboration. Uh, as for this one, I'll have to skip on it because of time. Then does that matter? Yes, it matter, because community outreach is vital to bring awareness into the encyclopedia. Lastly, sharing of user collections within the encyclopedia, which could be used in a variety of lessons, uh, lesson plan for social studies, science, and history uh, schools. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Sandra Tate, and um, I'm from Ghana. Um, we don't have a chapter in Ghana just yet, but we work as a group of people known as Planning Wikimedia Ghana. We are in the stages of planning a Wikimedia chapter in Ghana. Um, I'm supposed to talk about, I just want to note three, th tell you about three things um, that has worked for my 
group back home, and it's the use of social media. A lot of people in Ghana like Twitter, they like Facebook, but they are not aware that wikis are social media. So the moment you tell someone that, oh, a wiki is also a form of social media, then they are excited. Oh, well, if I tweet, then I can also edit a wiki. So playing around the concept of social media has helped us be able to get attention to Wikimedia and the wikis. And then not only telling people that wikis are social media, we also reach out to people via Twitter and Facebook. Um, for example, we, you, are, you are more likely to be successful if you just tweet about an article and just tell someone that there's something wrong with this article, who wants to edit it? Instantly, you do get someone going there to edit. Sometimes people reach us via Twitter telling us that, oh, there's this town that has been described as a village in a Wikipedia article. Shh, please go and correct that. People do come to us and ask us to fix articles. What we want more and more is like for people to actually be active and go there and edit themselves, which, yeah, is working. So um, I just want to tell everyone here that if you want more success, you might want to try actually tweeting about the articles that you want to invite people to come and edit. Um, also, uh, is anyone here who works with Wikimedia Foundation? Um, yes, uh, I wanted to say some, um, ask a question or make a contribution whilst the Board of Trustees were here, but I couldn't get to because of time. Now, I realized that um, there isn't anyone from Africa on the board. All I just want to say is Africa is, uh, internet penetration is, is growing. It is different from, for all of us. I mean, people in South Africa have different situations from those of us in West Africa, and I suppose it's the same from East Africa, North Africa. We are very diverse. When you hear Africa, we're not very equal in so many things. So all I'm just saying is, if it is time to choose a new executive director, please, 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 find someone that knows the African terrain, knows a bit about Africa internet. And one thing I want to say is, I'm not saying this as an African, but I want to say it as a Wikimedian. I believe that, yeah, Wikimedia wants world domination. Wikipedia wants world domination. But if somebody just buys a smartphone, a tablet in Africa, and the first thing the person wants to activate is Yahoo, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, I find that a problem. I want somebody to be able to buy a device and take Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons app into consideration that this is the first app I'm going to download when I buy my smartphone or something. But in Ghana, a lot of people are just downloading Facebook and all that. So if Wikimedia really wants to capture the whole world, I think it's about time you start paying attention to Africa. And the best way you can do this is find someone who is conversant with African internet revolution. Um, I think basically that's just it. So we need somebody who knows Africa very well to represent Africa, to be able to capture the African um, terrain, have more Africans edit Wikipedia. Because if Wikimedia doesn't do this, a lot of tech startups are coming up. They can take up the concept of wikis and then start doing something just purposely for Africa. But I believe everybody wants to know something about Africa. There's sometimes you Google a few things and you, know, you want to know about Africa. So it's just important, it's all inclusive. So. Um, yeah, someone to represent Africa and also use social media to your advantage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm. Hello. Hi, I'm afraid that we actually have to close this um, this panel meeting at or this panel. Um, we, unfortunately, because of time, we've, we've kind of run out of it. I hope that today that you got a really good snapshot of what has been possible and what is possible. There's a lot of things that we have been discussing as a, gr a collective Africa um, concerned group. Um, and there's a lot of really, really positive things that are coming up. And hopefully next year we'll have a bit more time to be able to tell people what's going on. Thank you very much for your patience and thanks for listening. Now, thank you, audiences. Uh, for those who would like to continue with the conversation with the panel, you may proceed to outside. And now this venue will now uh, host the co closing ceremony so that uh, we would like to have every seat filled. So uh, you, uh, audience, may choose to stay, but uh, we would like to see most of the seats are filled. So uh, while the preparation is underway, you are not required to vacate from this room. So uh, we expect the closing ceremony to begin at 4. Thank you.